going on, everybody? It's your boy, Rail, back with another review, man. Are you tired of me yet? Oh, you've asked for content. Now I'm giving it to you. This is what you asked for. Now, I'm very hyped because I'm very excited because I love doing finales. You know why? It means that's one more thing I ain't got to do. This quickly becomes a job, all right? You got people that depend on you and they want they stuff. So it's amazing. I get a nice little break when it's finale time, <laughs> right? All right, so we got Razor Canaan Season 2, Episode 10, the finale. We're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. Now, uh, I praised Episode 9 so highly because I thought the buildup for today's episode was damn near perfect. It was good. It had the right amount of intrigue. Um, some new doors open, some new avenues with the different characters. And I was excited to see how I was going to get flushed out, uh, this episode. But before we get into all that, what we need to do is cut the fucking malarkey. Oh yeah, that's, I said it. I said malarkey. Yep. So, you know, I mean, goddamn business. All right. Cut the shit, people. We, you and I know, we both know that you're not going to kill Marvin. Hell no, not this soon. Nope, if you ain't did it, you ain't going to do it now. It's not going to happen. So what they wanted to do was have us speculate, oh, Marvin is, got shot. Oh, no, what happens to him? Find out next year. See if our boy survives. Let me not even, I'm not even going to entertain people who even asked the question, you, y'all think Marvin did? Of fucking course Marvin's not dead. He was like the piece that held this whole thing together. When Rock had her slow moments, Marvin was always on his acting, the comedy. He was hilarious. Matter of fact, he was one of the people who drove a lot of the plot lines we're dealing with right now. So it would just seem dumb to get a, to let a character really get in his bag, get people really... um um. Uh, into it emotionally with this character just to snatch him away. And I could even see them justifying killing off Marvin if you had somebody to take his place. All right, because one thing's for sure, Lulu is dying before Marvin. He is way too emotional, but I'm going too far. Because my real issue with this whole season, that is finale time, I could talk my shit. My whole issue this whole season is can I ask you a question? Imagine we take Kanan out. Every scene, every storyline, just wipe him out completely. Is the show bad? Does the show even miss a step? If you're still thinking, let me do it for you. The answer is no. Kanan, for all his mommy issues, dating an older woman, that went nowhere, beating up, turning full gangster with the uh, the stick-up kid, goes nowhere, stealing drugs, living with famous, goes nowhere, none of the, none of this plot is moved by Kanan, none of it, the most exciting shit this year has been Marvin's anger management, Jukebox's relationship with her mother, with her father, um, her relationship with Nicole's dad. These things, th just Jukebox alone, her storyline is better than Kanan's. Then you got fucking Luz trying to be a producer, music producer. Then that introduces to Cartier. Then we got Cartier versus Rock and, and buying the business and Caviar in the Russian room and all. Has nothing to do with Kanan. Okay? Nothing. Rock, if she had, you could get rid of her son. It, her motivations are to make a multi-billion dollar drug entity. And she did all this begging for Kanan to come back to not need the motherfucker at all. Can I get an amen? And the only reason I wasn't killing Kanan was because I said, you know what? Let me not jump out the window. Maybe all this, him getting to know his dad, Detective Howard, him getting to know Detective Howard, uh... Him turning up his gangster, him deciding to sleep with older women, some, some, something. I'm just like, okay, maybe they lulling us to sleep. Maybe, right? In the season finale, just maybe 
he does something fucking whoa, something left field. Maybe he takes out a, a, a family member. I don't know. Maybe he shoots and kills an important person that we've been watching all season long. I don't know. I was reserving. I was reserving this harsh review of Kanan. But for this to be the title, Raising Kanan, and to not need Kanan? I don't know. So I am highly disappointed. And the writers missed several opportunities this episode. One, they could at least made it so where Kanan saved Rock at the end. That would at least been like, oh, shit, my son came in in the clutch. We've been beefing all season. He saved his mama much like she saved him out in the woods. No. He's riding around with his daddy. He shows up late. They missed that. Then the writers missed yet another important part that could have been pretty damn good if you ask me. Famous called a body last episode. Because the streets needed one. The streets need a body, so Famous provided one. Not one mention of that body. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. And so, and and him, it, he didn't even discuss the body with Kanan. Kanan don't even know Famous called a body. And Famous is walking around acting like he didn't even catch a body. And that's my problem. He's not even, they missed a great chance to let Famous, like, be not a goofball, not just like a fake comedy relief. Like he could have really been going through emotional distress about catching his first body, trying to hide it from people, maybe going through some emotional things and Kanan, and then at least give Kanan something to like, yo, what's up with my boy? And put them down some type of uh, path to where it would mean something. Now I'm just like, that that was a ball drop. Why have Famous catch a ball for him just to continue to crack jokes and be struggling in his apartment? Asking Kanan to come up with some money. Dropped the ball, so I was very disappointed. Um, but yeah, but for those those little things, which are really huge things, um, uh, yeah, whatever. I don't know. But let's get into the actual things that were good. Jukebox putting the beats on this motherfucker that was taking on a date. Apparently, Stupid Face, Stupid Face and Stupid Pants, he was the setup guy? Like, he was a mole? He was a, a undercover informant? He says that his mother sent her, uh, Jukebox's mother sent him to try to date her to find out was she even into guys? Like, is it just mother's intuition? I didn't see anything that gave her the idea that Juke liked chicks. Was it just that she didn't dress like a girl? Was that it? I mean, but she, or what a girl was supposed to dress like, like dresses and shit. I don't know. I think if you looked on the streets of New York, there was a lot of chicks dressed like Juke. And I don't think you could choose their sexual orientation, uh, you know, their sexual preference by the way they dress. So I don't know. Maybe it was mother's intuition. I'm not going to think that deep into it. Chalk it up to that. But it at least answered that weirdness between the dude and uh, Juke's mom when Juke first gave him the phone number. It was a whole weird Juke keep looking back at a mom. Her mom checking out dude. Dude is trying to mac up on Juke. It was just nasty, and I didn't understand it until now. And I wanted to clown my man for getting his ass beat by Juke, by getting his ass beat by a girl. But I can't. Let's just say elementary school rail may have caught the beats by a chick at some point. So I can feel his pain. I have no place to talk shit. You know, girls in elementary school get a lot bigger than us a lot quicker, right? And let's just say by them getting bigger, they hit a lot goddamn harder. So you guys can crack all your jokes and be like, damn, real got his ass. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Not to the extent of Buddy. Juke put feet on this motherfucker, like put all... All the Tims, all the ridges on the Tims on this motherfucker's midsection. So she went to town. That didn't quite happen to me. You know what I'm saying? But I can sympathize, so I can't make jokes, though. All right? But he did have that ass woman coming. Somebody had to pay for that uh, gay exorcism. Somebody had to get these beats. And I couldn't be more happier than it was him dumbface. Right? 
Now, Lou. Lou is, uh, you know, I want to like Lou. Like, I want to root for him. But he's too soft. He is. I'm sorry. He's just too emotional. Like, when he finds that extra money, I'm not mad at him, like, trying to discover, like, where does extra money come from? Like, yeah, I'll take it, you know. But what's to it? Then he sees that rock signed on it. So now he's mad that she has any dealings with that. And then now, with this whole war going on, he chooses the wrong time to try to press rock about the whole fucking signing of the company and owning the company. And I got to say, Lou came at Rock at the very worst time. Because Rock has been through it. Right? We're going to go through that. But Rock has been through it. So, I just want to touch on this scene really quick before we get into Rock's woes. So, (laughs) he comes and is like, you know, oh, you ain't going to tell me? You know, I went to the bank today, you know, so now I get to know, like, so you just will not going to say nothing? I loved this scene. This was my favorite fucking scene. Maybe my favorite in this entire season. Yes. When Rock had enough, it was beautiful. Soon as I thought Marvin was finna get my MVP, here she comes fighting back up the ranks with just one scene. But it's not gonna happen, Rock. You've been lightly acting this whole season. You took a break. You was killing shit season one. You took a backseat to Marvin this season. And yes, you tried to steal around from him with this scene. Valiant effort, but uh, no surprise here. I got Marvin winning this entire season. He is my acting MVP. But anyway, Rock fucking put on a master class. She looked genuinely irritated. She was like, you know what? Fuck it. You want to do it now? Let's do it now because I'm so tired of having the same conversation with you. I said, come on, Rock. Because I'm tired of the shit too. That girl, that woman, pardon me, pardon the body. That woman went in her bag. I thought she knew Lou personally. She said, nigga, I'm tired of this talk. Everything you got is because of me. And guess what? Oh, now you want to talk about the bodies you caught, nigga? Let me tell you something. I murdered Scrap. And I fucked up. Oh, yeah. And then he just sitting there, shut Lou right the fuck up. I said, oh, this is beautiful. Even Lou's hurt reactions was proud. That was a great scene. I damn near want to turn it on just to rewatch it. Because I felt her anger and her frustration. And when I see acting like that, I ain't gonna lie, I get excited. <laughs> I'm, I guess I'm just a nerd. But when I see motherfuckers acting, man, ooh, does something to me, baby. And she is just nailing them like, you know what? I caught that scrap body. And I was wrong. It wasn't even him. I fucked that up. It was his mama that was the snitch. And guess what? I gotta live with it. And not only live with it, but I gotta move forward and keep the business moving. Could you do that? I said, oh, shit. I said, could you do that, Lou? I'm watching the TV like, Lou, could you do that? No, you couldn't do that. You would fall apart at the seams, Lou. Could you do that, Lou? No, you couldn't. She was in her fucking boss bag. Oh, my God. Oh, I gotta say. I was, I, you can sense my excitement. She was, oh, it was beautiful. And he just sent up on the wall, posted up like, oh, fuck me. He's like, yeah. And then she was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and just put it out there. (laughs) Grabbed that man by his face and looked him deep into his soul and said, let me just tell you what it really is. Nigga, I own you. I own you, nigga. I said, oh. And then she just storms off like, I'm done. I said, hoo, hoo, hoo. That was great. If you ain't feel something that saying, I don't know. You must be dead inside. You must just be watching. You was in your phone. I don't know. I don't know how you know as hype as I am. Goddamn, that was great. And I like that because in a lot of my de- debates about power and about how Rock goes about her business, I see a lot of dudes talking about like how, you know, that that's why women in the game wasn't really made for the game. They really emotional or, you know, 
They was really kind of shit. No women like it wasn't Griselda Blanco out here holding shit down. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, I was confused. It was really coming at Rock, looking at her the same way as the dudes on the show looking at her. I'm like, now, granted, I haven't been the biggest supporter of Rock this season because I felt like she's been doing too much, made too many um, grandiose moves without taking care of little shit first, starting fires maybe where they don't need to be, too quick to clean up shit. But I got to say, the woman's business acumen has been tight. It's been good. And I feel like this scene let put everybody on notice that she's the motherfucking boss. She went to Tony Danza. Salute to the to the co um to the to the new mafia boss. Who's the boss? Tony Danza. And I love that because I never would have ever, you know, watching Who's the Boss is a show, I never would have seen Tony Danza in a in a role like this. A mob boss, somebody that's important, somebody that's cursing. I don't know why that just took me back like i was just like oh tony danza's cussing i don't know why my feelings got hurt <laughs> maybe that was just me i'm just an old nigga like i was like damn tony but you was on who's the boss you was such a lovable uh character like i don't get it what's up with all this foul language now all of a sudden you just now he's overly italian hey oh hey hey gabagu oh my mother sauce okay you get the tomato my mother sauce you buy it he just went extra mafia italian with it Hey, oh, hey, hey, oh, oh, hey, oh, oh, hey, oh, forget about it, hey, oh, you know what I'm saying, but I'm glad to see Tony in there, and I love how that scene, <laughs> when Baselli came in to be like, I don't mean to bother you, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to stress you out, but it's this motherfucker, he was like, oh, let me stop you there, she already came and hollered at me, and I said, oh my God, Rock is on it, and then he just changed, like, this she got some balls on And I'm like, but Sally, how many times are you going to say she got some balls on her before you realize that she's just a walking, talking pair of balls at this point? She is not to be trifled with, bro. No. She already sent Lou and them out there to lay your guys down outside the, uh, outside the uh, bar. And I was also wanting to say this. When, like, we see what happened later on, but... When Rock takes out one of them or a group of them, that really hits home for that for that for that boss for Baselli. Because these are people that they grew up with, that they lived their entire lives with. Right now, Rock only cares about her family. She's only got like four or five motherfuckers she needs to look after. Everything else, everybody else, her soldiers, could just be a casualty of war. So she's very much more disconnected than Baselli is to to her shooters all right which when you got expendable shooters that you're not emotional over it looking like rock could really come out on top of this war because i'll just keep sending guns the gun hires like hired guns to go get you but how many people's un uncles and and nephews and sons you gonna send at me how many of them i'm gonna kill and you you know what i'm saying how many you willing to wait before you say all right truce so I was like, Rock put herself in a hell of a position. I don't see no way for Baselli. But anyway, now he's in there apologizing to Tony Danza, like, oh, my God. Um, but, yeah. And he said, look, I'm going to tell you like I told her. I'm not finna jump in it. You handle your business, but you don't handle your business in my city. All right? We send the trash out to Jersey. We don't take the trash here. I said, damn. Nice guy, Tony Danza, that went out the motherfucking window. And then it was like, oh, yeah. And your friend, she bought a 29-gallon tank, by the way. So just throwing that out there. <laughs> he goes, let me get the biggest tank you got. And he becomes a aquarium salesman again. I was like, beautiful. He was in. He was out. Tony Danza did a hell of a job. Did not see that coming. That was a, that was a nice little surprise. I really like this Power Book 3. They really showing their ass. It's just that I don't like. The main character, Kanan. Not that he doesn't act or he's just nothing like that. It just seems like he's becoming useless. I need this to be more driven about him. It seems to just be 50s voice narrating. Like, is that only the thing that's Kanan? Then it should be like Power Book 3, Kanan's voice. Talking Kanan or some shit. And then let the, the like, no. Because the, the actor, he's not. Give him, give him a fucking storyline that means anything, please. 
Um, but also another thing I found weird about this episode because Rock has been going through it, right? So Rock just took out Cartier last episode in hopes of grabbing that Baltimore connect, right? Got dude out of jail, got his charges dropped for his mans, all that, all that. Now it's time to bust it down. She's like, hey, you asked me to take Cartier out? Done. Your boy, no more gun charges. Done. Now, how many bricks you gonna need and when? I can have those to you tomorrow night. What you thinking? What you wanna start off? Some light, 45, 50? Or you just like, you wanna be good for a while? Cause I trust you. I could drop 200 on them. 200 of them on you. How you wanna do it? <laughs> then my man goes, nope. No need. And she put it together herself. Motherfucker went to Joaquin. So that answers that whole Juliana looking at dude when he was spying on Rock and them having that conversation. I said, them Baltimore motherfuckers? Smart. Smart. I didn't know. I thought they was just doing their research on Rock. But the whole time they was cert- they were seeking out the connect just to come in and steal it. And then have her take out the one problem that was going to keep them from getting straight to the connect. I said, them boys is genius. Excuse me, I need a water break. And I'm back. Sometimes I do so much talking, I got to get some water to refresh the vocal cords, right? So, I'm like, that was genius. Now, I always said Juliana was not taking this shit on the chin. And she was going to get her payback. And she did. She certainly did. So she made that deal happen. Rock is now beefing with Juliana. And my question is, where did Juliana become so tough? She sure wasn't that tough girl that was getting the shit kicked out of her by her husband that Rock had to come save. She sure wasn't this tough when Unique came and kidnapped the shit out of her ass. And then she was writhing in fear every time he came in there to grab a pop. I said, where the fuck this tough ass Juliana come from? With the tall hairstyle. I didn't see the transformation. I must have missed it. And then when he goes, when Rock makes all those threats to Juliana, like, hey, one thing about punching up ain't about how you give a punch. It's about how you take one. So I'm out. And drops the mic. And her cousin looking at her like, hey, shorty dangerous. I don't know if you. And then she goes, I am too. I'm like, no, you're not, Juliana. You're not. So now. Rock has beef with the Connect. She's got beef with the Mafia dudes. And she's got beef with them Baltimore niggas. So she threatened their life. And she also got a shitty ass son stealing drugs and selling it on his own and not living at the house. So, Rock is not without her issues this episode. Then she got Neek pressing up on her, like asking if they could have like a work love relationship. I thought it was weird. But then I was kind of like, I'm somehow weirdly with that. I'm not mad at Neek and Rock linking up. But I don't know. You know, I've been team Neek for a long time this season. And the way, I don't know, he coming in like the knight in shining armor at the end when Rock was ready to go down like a G. Like, man, do what you came here to do. And Neek caught that body because they killed, they killed Warrell. But I like that because uh, we saw a lot of Italians getting shot. So we knew the hammer was going to drop. We know it was going to be some shooting back. And them boys did not come to play. They pulled out. It seemed like their guns was cleaned, Marvin. It seemed like their guns was checked and was probably worked on, Marvin. All right? And they was they was handling business. They caught some bodies. So that the war was officially on. And I enjoyed those scenes, right? But we saw Wario get killed. I guess you could say rest in peace, Wario. So he was the one major dude that caught a body but that died outside of Scrap this season. But who really cares about Warrell? His mama. I wonder if he told his mama where he was at. Mama's boy. My mama knew I came to talk to you. So if I get up disappearing, she go call them boys on you. Like, all right. <laughs> and, but, you know, that was Neek's man. And Neek, now we know his, I guess we kind of know his intentions. He knows, like, him and her was beefing, but he he took it business wise though. It was all business, really. It was Kanan's fuck up that started this whole thing. But anyway, he did mean something season one. But now they just decided, hey, live and let live. You ain't dead, I ain't dead. 
We ain't really kill nobody important, so fuck it. We here for a bag. And the fact that the Italians killed Wario pushed him further to rock side, and then he screaming south side. Like, yo, it's south side. Get on up, girl. I'm joining the battle. I'm not playing the sidelines no more. So that part made me very excited for next season. I'm ready to see this new Neek and Rock relationship. Uh, salute to that dude in the wheelchair that let Marvin in the building, let him in the room. Because Marvin had a giant gun. He was only able to get a few rounds off because it looked to have jammed. And I was like, well, what a hell of a time for the gun to jam. But Marvin did clean up his shit early in the beginning. So I can't say rest in peace, Sam. I thought Sam was going to be a bigger issue. He was not. <laughs> he wasn't. Marvin took him out right away. And I did like that. I did like that scene a lot. Sam talks about how he was an accountant and motherfuckers actually trusted him with money. And that crack got a hold of him and just let him take one more puff and you go ahead and take him out. I'm Hey, Sam is the ultimate crackhead. He went down. Look, he died on that hill. So, you know, crack is whack, but you got to salute him. <laughs> Gotta salute Sam. Hey, he lived the life he wanted to live, man. But um, I don't know if Marvel really internalized that. But, mm. and now, you know, he got, uh, but we knew something bad was going to happen. I told you, anytime something good happens in these shows, something bad happens. So the good thing that happened to Marvin was Juke is now back in the house. Now, the fucked up thing is he's shot in the gut. But I'm not tripping. He's going to be fine, like I stated in the beginning of this. So I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to see those conversations in the comment section or the Discord. I'm just going to politely scroll by whoever says, y'all think Marvin did? Look, stop it. Please. Well, I'm not going to entertain it. Now, um, how y'all feel about Jukebox Mom dying? Yep, same. Same here. I don't give a shit. Did anybody say, good? <laughs> you made a good shield for Rock. Thank you. You allow Rock to, <laughs> to get... That's fucked up. But fuck Juke's mom, bro. Like, what? A gay exorcism. Let's not forget. No. That deserves bullets. Abandoned her. Fake, fake showing her love. Bamboozling her and luring her into some cult-like... D- d- I don't know what the fuck that was. And uh, what? No. Do we think Juke is going to be hurt over her mom? Maybe. Maybe. And, um... What's her name? The other detective. Just some, who cares? She's after Kanan. She tells Kanan she knows everything. Kanan obviously goes to uh, Detective Howard and lets him know everything, his father. So now they're trying to make a plan on how to deal with Shorty. Well, come on now. We all know what the plan is. She's going to die. She look, She's walking around talking. She looking like a whole victim out here. So now that she knows the truth, I'm happy. Hopefully, when she dies, we can all be rid of this nonsense storyline, because uh, she is useless. She's just running around. She's out here getting treated by fucking crackheads every turn. They all laughing at her ass. You don't even know where a crack house is? She ain't real police, as my people from The Wire would say. She ain't real police. So, no, I'm so sick of her shit. Like, get out of here. Um, But, yeah, I think that was about it. Nothing more important to touch on, except for, like, we can wonder how Lou and Rock's relationship was going to be. You know, he did. Oh, Lou lost his girl, which I don't think he cares about. And wait, what the fuck? Why don't nobody know how to duck? I was just about to sign off. But that really upset me. Every every time people told him to get down twice. I heard get down twice. And guess what motherfuckers didn't do? Get down. They bust into the studio. Lose. Get down. She turns around like, get where? What are you talking about? What's going on? Bang. Dead. Dummy. Get down. Get down. Drop down. Don't. I didn't say spin around and see what the fuck's happening. Hey, what? What's that? So she's dead, but at least she brought a fire beat. You know, maybe her records will sell. We love buying music from dead people. Think about it. This could be the break Lou was looking for. But, oh, yeah, the battle, and also that was Lou's emotional thing. When he stormed in there, talking about, I don't want to be at this label no more. Like, and she's like, wait, chill, what's the problem? It's my sister, who else? Just, I'm like, Lou's a crybaby, man. Like, he's too emotional for me. He's a killer, but he's emotional. Too emotional. So that's going to be Lou's downfall. 
And there's his spite for his sister is only growing. But yeah, so that was a get down moment. And Juke's mom, when Rock seen like, oh shit, my security did? How the fuck you just, oh, get down. Then it was like, she tried to grab her down. She didn't. She just stood straight up to be murdered easily. So I was like, I guess get down don't mean shit. In the power world, you know who else was told to get down? You guessed it. Motherfucker from Power Book 2. He got the shit shot out of him. Right? Stupid. Stupid. Why did the, the, the why don't nobody in power know what the fuck get down means? Marvin telling the old girl to get down. She's now buried. The anger management lady. Nobody fucking gets down in this shit. That is so upsetting. Fucking get down. Like it's the it's two words. It's quite easy. You just drop. Just drop. I don't get it. But uh yeah, that's it for me, man. Um if you got any theories about next season, please share them. Get in the comment section. Go ahead and join the Discord. I'll drop a link again this time. I'll open up some more chances for you guys to drop, uh, jump on in here. It'll be the pinned comment. All right? And with that, protect your health, yourself, your wealth. Man, your boy Rail is out of here. Peace. Yo, I know I don't need no introduction, but y'all know who it is, man. It's your boy, Hollywood Rail. And I appreciate you for sliding through and watching these videos. But you know what I need from you? All right, if you ain't already, I need you to like this and subscribe this, man. We at a 1,000 trying to get to two, all right? Push it for your boy. Get them algorithms up. So when it comes to that subscribe button...